Uh, Father, we bless your name because of the privilege of having an open Bible to read. We thank you for light in darkness, for water in the dry season. We thank you because of the sun of righteousness that is shining for all people who are seeking to know the Lord. We ask you that you throw the light across everybody's past this afternoon in Jesus' name. Teach us to know your word and your will and your mind for our lives. And give us the grace to follow you. Step by step, closely following after you. And we're asking that you give us the grace to continue till the end. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Today we're examining the Bible on a very important subject that the Bible gives so much time to teach and to discuss and to encourage believers to think about. Everybody sitting here this morning has a great chance of becoming the man or the woman that God wants him to be. When a good thing is going to start, it begins in a small way. When God wants to build a great man, he starts in a small way. When a great victory is on your way, it starts in a very small way. When the Lord wants to show his might and his power and his wisdom in your life, it starts in an imperceptible very small manner. But will I tell you as well that when a great defeat is on the way, it may start in a very small way. And when a great fall is going to come upon a man or upon a woman, it begins in a very small way. And so whether it's a great fall or a great victory, whether it is a great mysterious sin or a great mischievous sin, whether you are going to become a great man or a great nuisance, it generally begins in a very small way that you may not recognize. So we're examining the Bible on the beginning of a great victory as well as the beginning of a great fall. You can see then that the message is divided into two aspects. And before everyone there is a possibility of a great victory and there is a possibility of a great fall. I am the one responsible to choose. You are the one responsible for your choice. Whether you become a great one in the hand of God or a great one in the hand of the devil. Before you, there is a possibility of winning a great victory. But it is not automatic. Before you, there is a possibility of experiencing a great fall. But it is not automatic. You will choose this day what you want to have. I only want to remind you that whether it's going to be a great victory or a great fall, it will begin, it will start in a very small way that you may not recognize. And I'm picking one man in the Bible. I'm reading from 1 Samuel chapter 9. Reading verses 1 to 3. Now you'll, you'll do me this favor today. You'll open fast and you will just 
watch all the things I read close with um, I mean with your eyes very closely because we want to read many passages of scripture. It's such a wonderful thing to know that all this is in the Bible. As a great encouragement that if that little fire of fervency of prayer of faith is coming up in your heart, it may be the beginning of a great victory ahead of you. I get if a little discouragement is coming up from your heart, a little disobedience, it may be the little beginning of a great fall ahead of you. Follow me through to 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 1. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zero, the son of Bekuras, the son of Aphiah, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. Ngea kuni kan ara Benjamin isiwa ama kuru kore ni kishi ama beli ama sesori ama bekurati ama afia ara Benjamin o kuni alagbara. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly, and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. O si ni ama kuni kani ni ti anke urukore ni solu. Ada ma kuni ti onya ti o si sharewa. Kosi si ni ti odara ju lo ni nubo bo awo ma Israeli. Lati eji kare lo si oki o gaju bo bo awo ni ana lo. And the assis of Kish, Saul's father, was lost. Were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee and arise, go seek. The asses. Kete kete kishi baba so lusi nu kishi si wifu so lu amore pi ya wamu akani nu amu ya nasha kuni pe lure kiosi didi lo wa kete kete wani. You know it appeared to be a small insignificant thing that happened in the family of Saul. Emma ko da biyo keke reti ko doni lo juto chele ni mi dile so lu. His father was a mighty man of power, a popular man, a great man in his society. Baba reja kuni alagba reni toje ba juma ni awu jo awu ni ane. A man that had accommodation of his own, servants of his own, children of his own, having a peaceful existence where he was living. Eni toni ibu beti re, toni awu mati re, toni awu eh eh awu eni nasha eti re ati ibiti on ton dagbe. But on this day, some asses were lost. And the father could have sent the servants to seek for the asses. But he called on his son, a good man, a young man, a choice man, a handsome man, a lanky man. And he said, now you go seek for the asses that were lost. It was a small beginning for Saul. It was a little work for Saul. It might have looked like an unnecessary assignment for Saul. But Saul knew that a great thing may start in a small way. And that if you are going to become great in future, you must show it by the obedience at home. You must show it by being submissive to your parents at home. Being diligent and hardworking. Are you watching that student that is in the secondary school? Loyal in keeping the school's rules and regulations. Obedient to the teachers and doing his assignment. That's a good beginning of a great life in future. Are you looking at that wife that has just got into the marriage home? That will be a homekeeper. Wash the place. Clean the, clean the floor. Make everything to be in the proper order. Keep the inside and the outside of the building clean. It's a good little beginning of 
up a great family line. Have you watched watching that, my, that mother that has just got a new baby? Showing love to that new baby. Caring for that little child. Singing choruses or songs of the Lord into the ears of the child. Never getting angry with the child, but just showing love and concern and wisdom in training the child. That's a good beginning of a little child that is going to develop into a strong pillar in the house of God. I want you to watch that businessman that is an operating business and in very little scene if you happen to give him a change that is only 10 cover extra and Mr. Kile has gone away and he will come back 10 kilometers to drop 10 cobo and say well you made a mistake this is the extra 10 cobo some people tell us that 10 cobo is of no significance it's a small amount of money and honesty in such a little sin is not important but I'm here to tell you this afternoon that that is a good beginning of a great Great man in the future. This was the way that Saul started. A little honesty. A little humility. A little obedience. A little submission. But prompt action in obedience to the Father. And that was a good beginning. You see in verse 17 of the same chapter. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man of whom I spake to thee all. This same shall reign over my people. The man was seeking for houses, but the Lord was repairing him for the throne and for the crown. And when I see a newcomer coming into this place, eager to pray, eager to read the Bible, going back home to check out the references that we call, I can tell you that it's a small beginning of a great prophet of God in the future. I see a man as we sing the chorus and as we pray, raises his voice to the Lord. And he, he will not allow anything to distract his attention. His mind, his soul, his spirit, and body is in the whole worship. I am telling you that that is the beginning of a great man of God in the future. When I see a man that has made a little mistake, maybe the choir or maybe among the ushers and then you say my brother my sister that sin is not right and it's a very small insignificant sin and the person goes on her knees or on his knees and he begins to pray with tears of repentance and just a small sin like coming late to meeting like not doing what you are told to do at the right time Something that other people just laugh about and overlook it. But this person is concerned for the small thing to be corrected. I am telling you that that is a sign of the development of a great man or woman of God in future. And this is how Saul came to be king. God said unto Samuel, Did you remember I told you about? About somebody yesterday that will reign over my people Israel, that will become king, a person that is humble and submissive and obedient to the word of God. Look at him coming. 
is not coming in a chariot, in a big car, in a vehicle. He is not coming with a train of servants behind him. He is not coming God just led rest. He is just coming as a simple person seeking for lost houses. And that simple, humble, obedient and submissive man is going to reign over my people Israel. In verse 18, then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. Do you see courtesy and respect in the way that Saul approached? The man of God Samuel. When I watch an usher approaching a visit to a newcomer, a stranger, with all respect and honor and courtesy and humility, you may feel that that is a small thing. But I'm here to tell you today that that small evidence of courtesy and respect and honor for the person you don't know is an evidence you are going to become a great man of God. The beginning of a great victory may come by us unnoticed. The beginning of becoming a great man of God may go by unnoticed. He, he was approaching Samuel, a prophet, a seer. A man of God and the person that will anoint him as king, but he did not know him, he did not recognize him. And he said, Well, would you please show me the house of a seer? Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Samuel is it. And I know that Saul would have regretted because he did not know that this was a seer if he had been disrespectful or over Samuel when he talked to him without knowing him. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer, go before me unto the high place. For ye shall eat with me today and tomorrow, and I, I will tell thee to uh, I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. Samali da Saul alone was we we pe a miniari na na go filosi wa ju mini bigiga. I was the bami jam loni ni oura mi was the jacky olo. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, see not. And set not thy mind on them, for they are found. Niti awan kete kete re ti o ti nu, la ti in wen jwame ta wa, ma fi o kan si, si won, ni to di ti won, ti ri won. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee and all thy father's house? And Saul answered and said, I'm not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin. Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? Saul, who down, who we pay? Ara Benjamin, he came, he said, Kekere ni nwe ya Israeli. He did let me go see Rehi, ni nu bo bwe ya Benjamin. Samuel was talking unto Saul. Samuel in Basalu Soro. Saul, do you know something? Saul, the Lord stand is upon you. The Lord call is unto you. You will reign over the people of God Israel. You be the captain of the army of Israel. You be the leader. The man on top. How did Saul answer? You know that answer to you may look small but that is the beginning of a great man in future he talked with self-abasement and humility he said my tribe is the smallest my family is the smallest I am the least 
I am the smallest person in the smallest family of the smallest tribe of Israel. So do you ever think that I will be what to say I will be? And the man of God told Saul, that is just the will of the Lord, the plan of God for your life. When you are small in your own size, when you are humble and you are lowly, that's the beginning of a great victory, a great power in your life. Humble people have a great future. Lowly people have a great victory ahead of them. And in chapter 10, verse 1, then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? In verse 6, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. And the, the man of God began to prophesy on Saul, telling him his great future. What will happen to him? That the Spirit of God will come upon him. The Lord will change him into another man. And in verse 7, let it be when these signs are come unto thee that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. Now the Lord will be with him, Samuel said. He will not be alone on the throne ruling Israel. God will give him the authority, the wisdom, the knowledge to rule Israel, his people. All that he needed will be supplied unto him. How did all that great privilege, advantage, opportunity come upon Saul? Little obedience. A small sin that he did. He was lowly, humble, and submissive. You may count it a small sin to be humble. Count it a small sin to be obedient. Count it a small sin to be submissive to your husband at home. Among the ushers, count it a small sin to be obedient to the head ushers. In the choir county, something that God doesn't uh, take an interest in to be submissive to the choir leader. Or in the ministry, you may count it a small seat to be obedient to the leader. But when I see humility in the life of an individual, when I see a person that is sensitive to the touch of the Spirit of God, when I see somebody that is sensitive to timing, Sensitive to be obedience in the word of God. I recognize that it is an unfailing principle of scripture to make that person a great one in the future. But then the commandment gave came with the responsibility. There is the promise and there is the precept. And if we will take the promise, we must abide by the precept. In verse 8, Samuel was not talking to Saul. But do you know something? Samuel was no, no more talking to Saul as an ordinary man. He was not talking to him as a king, as a captain of a mighty army, as a great man of God that God is going to use. And he's already planning the victory with him. He's already looking at the enemies, the Philistines. 
And he's saying, God has chosen you in the whole of this nation. He has made you number one. The captain, the man on top. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace of praise. Seven days shall thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. The Philistines were enemies to the children of Israel. And Samuel knew that the captain had come, the king had come, the warrior had come. God will be with him. God will empower him. God will anoint him. And God will give him the wisdom to overcome all the enemies. And God will be directing him. Showing him step by step in the way how to overcome. And Samuel told Saul that you'll go before me unto Gilgal. When you are going to wage war against the enemies of Israel, but you'll wait for me seven days. Saul must be listening very closely because this was the first time he was meeting the prophet of God. And he told him you'll have to wait seven days. You must not be agitated or impatient. Do you know that patience is a, is a rare commodity in the lives of very many people? You know, people are always in a hurry. They don't like to wait on God. They don't like to wait for people. A patience is not common in the lives of people. But do you know if you are going to become a great man of God? If you are going to get the great victory ahead of you, patience is a small thing that people don't take notice of, and yet it is important if you are going to become great. And he told him, You'll wait for me seven days. I want you to follow all these things because they are very important and essential. Eventually Saul became a king. When he became a king, everybody loved him and appreciated, appreciated him, accepted him as the king of Israel. In chapter 10 of uh, 1 Samuel, Samuel 24, Samuel said to all the people, see ye him. Whom the Lord has chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. Then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. Samuel said, all the people away, every man to his house. Samuel is so a white job up and when you're not, what's he called? See me, we what's he feel? See what you're looking at. Samuel is in Rambo boy in your now, Lord. Oh, look, look, see later. And Saul also went on to Gibeah, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. So look, I lose it, not see later, and he give it. The Lord brought him out of the children of Israel. This is the leader, the captain and the king, the one that will go before you in battle. By the way, I want to ask you, as students of the Bible, when it came to, uh, to the notice of the public that Saul was to be chosen, did Saul come out? God just lay dressed and you know very happy and proud and pompous and he said oh yes I'm the one that is fit to be king and Samuel said 
Before that very day, they saw go to a particular place practicing how to walk majestically as a great man before the people. They all call some drummers and singers together to compose a song about his great name Saul. Did Saul have some people that will line up and bow down, prostrate before him and say, This is the king? Did Saul print a large poster with his picture saying, this is the king to all the nation. I'm telling you that when you see a man that is humble, that is lowly, that is hiding, his identity, not wanting to be known, that's evidence of a great future for that man. When you see a man that is not projecting himself into the front line, Line, but it's leaving it in the hands of God to search him out, bring him out, and show him to the people that's evidence of a man that is going to become great in the future. They were looking for Saul, they couldn't find him, he went to hide somewhere. He was saying, Oh no, I can't do it, I am too small from a small family and from the little tribe of Benjamin. I am a weak instrument. How can God use me? Wasn't that the attitude of Moses when God called him? I am a stammerer. I cannot do it. Wasn't that the attitude of Jeremiah when God called him? I am a child. I cannot talk to the people. Wasn't that the attitude of Ezekiel when God called him? And God had to encourage him, telling him, go to the people I'm sending you, whether they will hear or forbear. Was that not the attitude of Daniel in, in Babylon? When the, all the magicians and the soothsayers will be called, they will not find him eventually. He will come last, and then he will do the great thing that others are not able to do. Was, was that not the attitude of John the Baptist when they went to him? I doubt the Christ or who are you? Oh no, he said, I'm not the Christ, I'm the little voice of the man calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Was that not the attitude of Paul the Apostle? Who said, I'm not even worthy to be an apostle? That Paul, man, I'm the chief first of sinners. But God who is choosing the foolish to confirm the mighty has chosen me. Is that not the example of our Lord Jesus Christ? And are we not to follow in its footsteps? Because we are told he made himself of no reputation. He humbled himself and became obedient even to the death of the cross. And God seen that he humbled himself has exalted him. And has given him a name above every name. That are the name of that Jesus Christ every knee should bow. Of things in heaven on earth and under the earth. I am saying that the Bible says from cover to cover that humility and obedience to the word of God is the evidence of a great man in the future. In 1 Samuel chapter 11 verses 12 and 13 The people said unto Samuel Who is he that said Saul? 
Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men that we may put them to death. Some, some people were now supporting Saul to the point they wanted to kill all, oppos all opposers. They didn't want any opposition party to the reign of Saul. They said Saul is king and all opposers will be dead before the day runs out today. And they were asking all over the nation who is he that such shall Saul reign over us? Who is he that we humiliated Saul? Who is he that will not accept Saul? Let him show up and we cut off his head and kill him away. What did Saul say? Did Saul say Saul say, bring them, let's get rid of them. Yes, Did Saul say, bring them, and I will not have any opposition in my kingdom. Yes, Verse 13. And Saul said, there shall not a man be put to death this day. For today the Lord has wrought Israel has wrought salvation in Israel. A man that will not retaliate, no matter what you do against him, is that not the future of a great man? A man that has no bitterness against an enemy. A man that has only love. Kindness. Charity. Hospitality. And he loves his neighbors and his friends and his enemies and the strangers. Is that not the very attitude of God? Is that not the very example of Jesus Christ? Is that not what the early church did? Pray for the enemies. Don't you remember Jesus on the cross of Calvary? Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. And if a man is preparing for a great victory in future. And if you ever hope to become a great businessman for the Lord. You know you just have to forgive completely all those men or servants or messengers who have taken away your money. A little maid that was living with you and told the big lies against you. If you are going to become great in the hands of God, you know you just have to forgive her. Your mother you know, if you are looking for promotion from the hands of God, you must have to forgive all the other co workers who hate you in your office. That's the beginning of a great future, of a great victory. As you turn your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 13, I want to show you this turning point in the life of Saul. So far, so good. He's been doing well. He's been following a path upstairs that will take him to the very place he ought to be. If he had continued in humility and obedience and submissiveness into the submission into in the hands of God, he would have just become great with his posterity and his children becoming great in the hands of God. But in 1 Samuel chapter 13, reading there from verse 5, and the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots, and 6,000 horsemen, and the people, as a sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched the mishmash eastward of Beth Heaven. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, in a difficulty, in a predicament, for the people were distressed. Then the people did hide themselves in caves and in tickets, and in rocks, and in high places, and in pits. I want to Israel to sleep, one one, you know, if I do not to repay, I want to know what. 
ninu iha mo nigba na ni awon eyan na fi ara pa mo ninu ihu ati ninu pati ati ninu apata ni ibi giga ati ninu kan ga gbigbe and some of the hebrews went over jordan to the land of god and gilead as for Saul, he was yet in gilgal and all the people followed him trembling o mira ninu awon heberu boke o do jordan si ile gadi ati gilead bi o se ti solu o n wa ni gigali sibe gbogbo eniyan si si wa ni si gbogbo eniyan na si n wariri lehin re why was Saul in gilgal ere di re ti solu fi wa ni gigali so you tell us why were you there solu so fun ere di to fi wa ni gigali the enemy side against you awon tantako the children of israel are hiding awon mo israeli n sapa and your followers are trembling awon to tell us si n wariri so rise up and do something quickly solu dide ki o si se nkan ni gbogbo do something quickly the enemy will smash you and destroy your nation yo ba de te se nkan ni ki a ki awon ta yo pa orun won si ko ri le de and first day Saul was still waiting ni ojo kini Saul n duro second day Saul was still waiting ojo kini Saul n duro and the trembling agitated children of Israel that were following him came unto him and said Saul what's the matter with you awon mo Israel to won wariri to won si je ni to nkan ni won ba Saul pe a ki lo chi o Saul we thought you are courageous and bold against the enemy a ro pe eni to gbo ya ti o si fi lo di Saul ta ni ho do you know the answer of Saul nja o si mo ida un Saul he said i'm waiting for Samuel because when i was going to be anointed he told me to wait 7 days and i'm waiting and the people kept on trembling fearful fainting on the first day i'm sure that some people might have come to Saul saying Samuel has not come let's do something can't we do something with our sanctified common sense and Saul said i, I want to wait for Samuel because patience is important humility is important waiting for the time of god in every sin is important uh, and i want to tell you that Saul waited for 1 2 3 4 5 6 days in fact he waited for a part of the seventh day in verse 8 and he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed but Samuel came not to Gilgal and the people were scattered from him I want, you, I want you to check back again in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 8. Oh Samuel chapter 10 verse 8. Now shall go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come down unto thee. When I come down, I will offer burnt offerings. I Samuel will offer sacrifice so peace of friends e mi samuel yo ru ebo irepo now so listen very well to this seven days thou shalt tarry till i come to thee samuel is the soul wa jaji sile ni ijo meje ni wo duro titi emi o fi to wa and it is after offering the sacrifice that i will show you what thou shall do lei ti mo ba ru awon ebo na tan ni emi o fi ohun ti wo o se han you don't know what to do until samuel comes oh mo to se titi samuel you don't know what step to take until the man of god directs you oh my gesa to gbe titi eni olorun yo fi dari re you may be the king o le je oba na you need to be humble and receive direction from the from the prophet of god mo ni lati ni re le ki o si gba e to ni lati enu wo le olorun You may be the head of your family. But you don't know what to do except to a counsel by the man of God. You may be the head of shall. But you don't know what to do until you are counseled by the leader. You may be the choir master. But you do not know what to do until the man of God shall show thee what thou shall do. You may be the leader of a section in the ministry. But you don't know know what to do until the man of God shall guide you this is what Samuel was telling Saul and in, in uh, Samuel for Samuel chapter 13 verse 8 he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed but Samuel came not to Gilgal and the people were scattered from him and so said bring he the burnt offering to me and peace offerings 
and he offered the burnt offering. Do you know he went ahead and did what he should not have done? That's the beginning of a great fall. My brother, a little impatience, a little disobedience to the word of God. You know, sometimes uh, some of our people say that, well, uh, little jewelry will not spoil Christianity. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, they could be converted. They could be children of God. They have repented of their sins. Until this time, they are humble and submissive and obedient to the word of God. Until they begin to argue with the word of God. I don't see that this little jewelry will stop the flow of the power of God into my life. And some of the people might say little fingernail that we're painting will not stop the favor of God from my life. I mean it's not of consequence of significance if the woman will leave her scarf, will leave the head uncovered, that's a small thing. Do you know when you begin to appeal to your common sense but to the, except to the word of God? When you begin to reject the counsel of God and the word of God? And you begin to accept into your life a little disobedience? When you begin to accept your life a little rebellion? And you begin to bring it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Matter to your life. That's the beginning of a great defeat coming ahead of you. You know when you begin to say, Little bribe will not stop me from being a Christian. Being a little party, birthday party in our home will not bring me into judgment with God. Do you know that is the very beginning? of a great defeat coming in your life. What authority do I have to say that? Look at verse 10 of First Samuel chapter 13. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. Look at a man that waited for seven days, but he missed the victory by one hour. Are there not some Christian women here? We're looking for to marry. And they have been waiting for good seven years on the Lord. And they missed the will of God by one month. And they get into a great defeat in their lives. And there are no people who have been waiting to get children from God. They've been waiting for seven months or seven years or 17 years. And just before the answer comes from God, they miss the great victory of their life by one by one one hour, one day, or one week. This humble man, this obedient man, this submissive man to the word of God, has been waiting for seven days, a little time to the victory, just an hour to the time, he means the victory, he means the favor of God, he means the mercy of God, and then Samuel came, he went out to salute him, and in verse 11, Samuel said, what hast thou done? You know how God loves you. You know how humble you are. How obedient you are. How great a future you have. You know the great future and the victory that was waiting for you. What have you done? What step have you taken? And Saul said, 
Paulo si da npe because i saw the people who were scattered from me nitori ti emi ri pe awon eniyan na ntu ka kuro lo mi and the came is not within the day supported iwo ko si wale akoko ojo ti ti o da and that the philistines gather themselves together at mitmar awon philistines si ku ara won jo si ni mikmashi therefore said i Nitori na le mi se wi pe Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal. This is Syria, our Philistines yo so kale to mi wa And I have not made supplication unto the Lord. Be le mi ko ti tu Oluwa loju. I forced myself. E mi si ti ara mi si. I forced myself. E mi si ti ara mi si. My brain, my mind, my body, my emotions agreed together and we left our spirit and our heart behind and just forced myself. O fa lo mi ero mi okan mi ati yara mi gbogbo re won won so kapo won si ti mi mo fi e mo fi e mi olorun sile how many times have you left the word of god ibame lo lo ti fi oro olorun sile let the spirit of god fi e mi olorun sile that is telling you cool it down o so pon se jeje wait for the next tower keep on praying by the will of god deny yourself be separated from the world hold on to the bible don't go astray don't turn back don't backslide you have been waiting for seven Days or for seven years, keep on waiting. You have been praying for seven months, keep on praying. You have been waiting for the Lord in humility and patience, keep on waiting. You have determined and decided you are not going to give up, give any bribe, keep on holding on. You have been fighting and contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints, keep on fighting for it. You will be holding your cool, refusing to be angry or to fight or to be bitter. Keep that ten pound under control. But just an hour before the answer comes. An hour before your victory comes. An hour before the answer to your prayer. You allow discouragement. You allow the pressure of your people in your place of work and in your houses where you are living. And you allow your mind and your brain and your sense to force you to go and do evil. That's what happened to Saul. That's what made him a wreck and a ruin in his life. That was turned the kingdom away from him. That's the thing that made him to lose the peace and the mercy of God. That's what removed his name out of the book of Fly. That little impatience to away the kingdom of God away from Saul. And in verse 11, Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me. And that thou camest not within the days appointed. And that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmah. Now look at verse 13. And Saul said to and Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. My sister who has been dressing as a believer. You have allowed the pressure of your mother, the pressure of ladies among around you. To force you to go and take this little earring to use and to patch up. Thou hast done foolishly. I'm telling you, man or woman, coming here to pray, looking for a child, and you have allowed the pressure of people around you to take you to the harbors in the town. When you have waited for seven good years to on the Lord, and you have turned away from the Lord, seeking your help from the arms of the flesh. Thou hast done foolishly. And as you've been looking for jobs, writing in your prayer request, and you have been running here for prayer, and now you are trying to help yourself to bribe your way through to get something. Thou hast done foolishly. My brother has been waiting for a future partner from the Lord. Allow the tears of your mother, the pressure of the women, the examples of other men, 
bere awon okunrin mi ran push you to go and make move to talk to an unbeliever o ti o lati lo ba alai baba soro when you have waited for this seven months or seven years or even 10 years o si ti duro boya osu meje yo du meje tabi odun mewa that was not foolishly what ti hu iwa si were that was not kept the commandment of the lord thy god o ko pa o fi oluwa olorun re mo for now will the lord have established the kingdom upon israel forever ti o ti ti o ti pale ase fun o nitori this is in oluwa e ba fi di ijoba re kale lori israel But now, but now, after you have lost your humility, after you have lost your obedience, after you have lost the submission to the total word of God, after you have lost your patience, after you have gone out of your place and you have gone to another's place, after you have run, you have embraced. Said the word of God. We said the word of God. But now. The kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought a man at his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. From that time, Saul could not do right. From that time, Saul could no more be obedient. You know in chapter 15, that the man of God sent him to destroy the whole of Amale. Could he do it? There was no more grace to do it. When David came to play before him, so that the evil spirit that came upon him can be driven away. Could he love that man David? No, there was hatred and bitterness upon him. Jealousy came upon him. Jonathan, a son, called him and said, My father, what has David done? What did Saul say? Saul said, You are the son of a foolish woman. Don't you know that as long as David remains alive, you cannot get a throne? The spirit of God left him. The grace of God left him. It was a little sin that brought his defeat and his great fall. And you know he left the throne and he started seeking for David to kill. In fact, in chapter 22, we are told he even killed, killed more than 400 of the priests of God. I know our time is gone, but let me read you one, one reference more. In 1 Samuel chapter 28, let's see the end of this man. The man that started in humility, in great obedience, submission to the Lord, the man that was patient at the beginning of his life. Let me show you how this little deviation brought a great fall into his life. When you begin to sense in your own heart, Hatred against the ministers of God who are here. When you begin to detect in your own life, disobedience to the word of God were teaching you. When you begin to detect in your own heart, rebellion against the commandments of God. When you begin to discover in your heart, a slackness, a prayerlessness. That is the very beginning of a great fall, a great defeat coming in future. When you begin to discover impatience holding you and grabbing you. When you begin to discover your brain, your mind, your body, your neighbors, your mother, your sisters, all forcing you to go against God. That's the beginning of a great fall and a great defeat in your life. When you begin to find in your life that you don't love the children of God anymore. And you allow a little hatred, a little bitterness to come upon you. And the fellowship and the love and the togetherness is no more there. When you begin to discover your life, 
on a Sunday morning when the people of God will say I was glad when they say unto me let us go to the house of the Lord when you begin to discover a little laziness that your eyes want to sleep when you shall run here to come and worship God a little tiredness and you find that you are no more willing no more eager excited to worship God I'm telling you it is the beginning of a great fall a defeat in your life you see now it started with this man's song and now in chapter 28 reading from verse 3 now Samuel was dead and all Israel lamented him and buried him in Rama, even in his own city. Samuel is city. Kuko Gwesuel is in Sokunre. Once he's seen in Rama, he lured. And Saul had put away all those that had familiar spirit and witches out of the land. Saul is city. Mo mo abo kusoro kuni ati. Mo abo kusoro obini kulo ni le no. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together. They pitched in Gibeah. And the Philistines si kwa ramo jomwa wa once he does it, Shunemu. Saul was in Kobo Westwali. John once he tried to see Geboa. And when Saul saw the host of the of the Philistines, he was afraid and he sat greatly trembled. In but he saw no see the old one. One Philistine now. Once he once he beru. I are asking why did he did he did he? Notice verse six. Yes, yes, I care for. When Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. In but he saw no see the Lord of Luwa. Why should the Lord answer? A man that has gone back into impatience. Why should the Lord answer? A man that had gone back into disobedience. Why should the Lord answer? A man that had accepted hatred and jealousy into his life. Why should the Lord answer? A man that will command the priests of God to be killed and destroyed. Why should God answer? A man that was seeking for David, who delivered the children of Israel from Goliath, seeking for him to kill him. The Lord answered him not. Verse 7. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit attender. And Saul disguised himself. Why? Well, you know why? Oh my dear. And just like if you here, you've been coming to this revival center. You've been coming to this great healing hall. You've been coming to this place where God is saving, sanctifying, and baptizing in the Holy Ghost. You've been an usher. You've been a member of the choir. You've been a song leader. And you've been a worker in the ministry. Oh, you are just a member of good standing in the ministry. You have been a house fellowship leader. But you've gone into disobedience, impatience, hatred, bitterness, and you have grudge against the ministers of God who are teaching you the word of God. And you pray, there is no answer. You call and there is no response. And the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac is no more your God. And now you want to seek to the Habalis. How will you do it? Of course, you will have to wear sunshade. You will have to wear agbada. And you will have to disguise yourself. Put on a hat. Have a walking seat. So that nobody who has seen you here will be able to recognize you. You have to have the chicken under the wide agbada road. And then you have to go in another man's car. You have to disguise yourself. And go to a witch or a wizard. 
And you people who are looking at me right now, you are by the word of salvation, the word of repentance, you are by the word of reconciliation with God, you are by the testimonies of how God is healing and delivering people. You have been coming here reading the Bible, studying the Bible. You have come up here to give testimony that you have the peace of God, the joy of God, the life of God. You have told us your name is written in the book of life. If a time will come in your life when disobedience is tempting you, testing you, and drawing you. When you, if you yield to impatience, if you yield to rebellion against the word of God, the Lord will no more answer your prayer. You will call and we know I no more answer. And you have to go to the witches and wizards in town. But I'm praying for all of you here this day that God forbid that happening to you in Jesus' name. But it happened to Saul. It is this guy himself. He went to a witch and in verse, in verse 8 Saul disguised himself and put on all that raiment, all that garments. And he went and two men were seen. And he came to the woman by night, not by day. And he said, I pray thee divine unto me by the familiar spirit. And bring him up, whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul has done, how he has cut off those that are familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. Oh, it was Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? He, she said, Saul must not hear. Which Saul will not hear. That Saul is right standing before you. He's no my child of God. He's backsliding. Impatience and disobedience has crowded out the life of God in his life. And the man, the woman was still afraid of Saul. Then, uh, then said, uh, then Saul, swear unto her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, thou shalt, there shall no punishment happen to thee for the sin. Do you know what the Bible says in First Corinthians, Chronicles, chapter ten, verses thirteen and fourteen? Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept now, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of age. I don't know how you want to die, but I want to die with the peace of God in my life. I want to die with the joy of salvation bubbling in my soul. I want to die with the word of God filling all my heart and saturating me. I want to die with the smile of God upon my face. I want to die with the conviction and testimony that I laid my hands on the plow on the day God sent me. And I never look back. I don't know how many people today are having the same conviction in them. I don't know many people here this afternoon are having the same decision and desire. Saying, I don't want to go back. I don't want to backslide. I don't want to go back into the juju of the world. I don't want to go back into the worldliness of the world. I want to endure to the end that I will be saved. And if you are there, you can tell the Lord this afternoon that even though others may backslide, others may go into impatience and disobedience. I have laid my hands on the plow. I will never go back. I keep on praying to the Lord. I will wait for God. I will be patient. I will be humble. I will be submissive unto the word of God. And sufficient as the grace of God will keep you until the end. I want you to go on your knees and pray unto the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Tell the Lord with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your spirit, with all the 
determination and conviction in you. I will never go back. I will never go back. I will never go back. I keep on worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. The grace of God is sufficient. The power of God is sufficient. He will keep you until that day. If you are willing to be cared, call upon the name of the Lord.